Hey guys, I want to get the word out. Penn Sunday School did another interview with Gary Johnson. This time he was in the studio, so it was perfect. There was no issues with the technology of Skype or anything like that. I highly recommend you guys go listen to this podcast or maybe even the video. Um, I'll find it. I'll link it in the description below. We find ourselves in an extremely interesting time where you have two candidates of the two primary parties that everyone hates, like subjectively. But more than half of, of the people hate these candidates. They hate them. They actually hate them. If there was ever an opportunity for the Libertarian Party to get a foothold, be involved in the debates, and possibly, possibly win this, this is the time. So I think now, if you're a Libertarian, if you're minded kind of like I am, I think we got to get out there and start stumping, guys. I, I really think we do. So um, go listen. And if you don't agree, whatever you don't agree on, post below. The question of the day is right up front. Go watch the, the audio for this uh, for this interview. It's a, it's a decent interview. It's about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes long. Lots of stuff there. Go listen to it. And if you find something you don't like, post below and let's talk about it. And I'll address it in video, okay? I would really appreciate that kind of interaction today in, on this video, guys. All right, thank you very much. It doesn't play on the recording here, but in the rear view mirror, there's an engine just lying on the side of the road. Like a four cylinder engine out of some kind of Japanese car. All right, well, that's one less thing I have to worry about now. Got my tux back over there somewhere for Darren and Sonia's wedding, which is this Saturday, which so assuming there's some portion of it that I may end up recording, you will see that on Sunday. So I was doing some research today, working on the book, and I came to look across something interesting. And it ties directly into what we talked about yesterday. The Tree of Liberty, a letter from Thomas Jefferson to William Smith. I've always read, much like you've always read, right? The, the Tree of Liberty requires the blood of so-and-so for so-and-so to keep going as manure or fertilizer. And I know I'm selling it short it's because that's not the topic of this. It's about everything else in this letter. The story of this letter is basically running through some debts that are due, a discussion of the media against the the Americans, anarchy, all kinds of stuff. But there gets to a point where they talk about rebellion, and that's where the Tree of Liberty comes up. And the reason why I was I was bringing it up is because there's there's stuff in here, particularly pertaining to the Second Amendment and the rights of self-defense, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I'm going through this and I'm, I'm reading up, you know, what country can preserve its liberties if the rulers are not warned from time to time? that their people preserve the spirit of resistance. Let them take arms, the remedy is to set them right as to facts, pardon and pacify them. Okay, that was the key point. The remedy is to set them right as to facts, pardon and pacify them. So, in a way, what Jefferson is saying is that the spirit of resistance is a, it's, it's always there, it's, it's a natural right, which I'll talk about much more in the future. But this natural right of resistance is something that's inside all men, and you can't, you can't get around it, you can't get away from it. But basically what leads to this, these resistances and these revolutions is that people don't understand, and they don't, they, don't, they don't have the information, the adequate facts to deal with what's going on around them, and so they can't, they can't handle it. There's an interesting sign off here at the end. The want of facts worth communicating to you has occurred 
me to give a little loose to dissertation. Let me repeat that. The want of facts worth communicating to you has occasioned me to give a little loose to dissertation. As they're discussing about South America and they're going on about other things. And he signs off with, we must be contented to amuse when we cannot inform. After yesterday's video, that stuck with me. So I have a different, and after reading that, I have a different point of view now about bread and circuses. We are not just succumbing to the ease and simplicity and the mediocrity of bread and circuses. We're doing it because we don't have proper information. Either information through the living of an experience and learning something from that experience or the actual information that you should know better and, and you shouldn't be watching TV all day and you should actually go out and do something. And that because the TV is woefully unequipped to experience you and teach you these things, they'll do with simply entertaining. Interesting. Very interesting. So is it the media that's pushing the content on us, or are we just consuming exactly the only thing they can provide since they can't inform? And we're woefully unprepared to take in that information if they could. Interesting. It's amazing how when you go back a couple hundred years and you read the, the, the actual writings of, of our forefathers, how much it changes your opinions of things. In particular, I've always heard of that quote of the Tree of Liberty, but I never actually read the letter. And reading the letter gives you volumes. Particularly when he talks about, God forbid we should ever be 20 years without such a rebellion. The people cannot be all and always well informed. Interesting. He's coming from the place that it's his job to try and inform people. That he is better suited when the people know the information that he knows and has the opinions, understands the opinions that he holds and how he governs by what experience. How far we have strayed from that viewpoint of our forefathers. And it's all there. You can go look at the Federalist Papers. You can go look at Jefferson's writing being an anti-Federalist. Very interesting. We come to the end of the video, and this is what we call a trailer. It's where I ask you, if you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see my day-to-day -day vlogs, hit subscribe. And if you want, I've got a whole playlist with over 700 videos just talking about stuff that you just watched. So if you enjoy all of that, go check that out too. I really appreciate you coming. Comment below. I engage with everybody. And thanks a lot.